Hi, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the actual session we're going to do, which is um, building faster with GitHub Copilot. Um, there's usually a space between with and GitHub, but um, I did these slides quite late. And code spaces. You saw us use GitHub Copilot if you were in the room just a second ago. We're going to do that again for the, mo for the most part of this um, session. But I'm also going to show you code spaces because this is a great way of kind of getting up and running. In that last little demo, if you were here, I just did a, we just did straight HTML and JavaScript, right? But we might want a little bit more code. Like we might want an actual working thing that you can deploy to a server that has some server-side code and stuff like that. Now, I might not have the things on my machine to do that work. So instead, I'm going to spin up a code space, which is like a development environment in the cloud fit for purpose for a particular task. So we are going to do, what are we doing? We're doing a Next.js application. Mm -hmm. And we'll tell you what we're actually going to build in a sec. But, um, oh, yep, that's right. We have no slides. <laughs> um, so GitHub code spaces are your development environment in the cloud. Um, the great thing is if you want to try these, you can spin up a code space from any repository. And it will start with the universal, um, uh, the universal image, which has a ton of stuff installed. But if you just want to play, if you go to github.com slash codespaces, that is all of the code spaces that you own and all of your orgs own that you have set up. So all of the existing code spaces. But there are also all of these templates, these quick start templates, including this one, GitHub Copilot, that just lit up today. Yeah. And that contains, does it contain rock, paper, scissors? Or is not it, anymore. Not anymore. Um. Oh, disappointing. Um, <laughs> but it does contain a thing called Code Tour as an extension to Visual Studio Code, yeah. which walks you through a few files and you can make changes and it tells you how to use Copilot. So that's a, that's a good way of doing that. I'm going to actually look at all of these templates. I know nothing about Next.js, but I'm going to use that Next.js template. Now this is spinning up a brand new code space as we are watching. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see it. Um, and as that starts, there's a few scripts and things that run as well. So it's loaded everything. We've got our template there on the left, all of the files we need for Next.js. But it's also got some scripts and some commands to say, let's actually just run it. So now I have a running Next.js in my local code space. You saw me click the button and you saw how long that took. I can debug and make changes now. So I could change. This to fast free refresh to say like, hi all, save, and it's a refreshed, refreshable demo. So I knew nothing about Next.js. I don't have any of those packages installed on my machine. This could be a brand new machine or an iPad or anything, and I'm up and running, able to debug, able to run this application. Now, this isn't a terribly interesting <laughs> um, demo right now. So what we thought we'd do, or Rizal thought, <laughs> Rizal said, this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to write a markdown editor from scratch in Next.js. Yeah. Um, we could switch to yeah, my computer. Switch to yours. So do you have, you already have one? Yeah, yeah. I already have like the dev container and everything running. I mean, the only reason why there's an error on the right hand is because I deleted the code we had. But we're going to use GitHub Copilot to create a markdown editor. It sounds super ambitious, but we already saw how the snake game went. Um, so before I, <laughs> before I use chat, we're just going to like use the comment to text. And if you notice, I have like this large comment here. Um, everyone learns their own style of using GitHub Copilot, but this is like mine where I usually say like a high level task description of what I want to get done. So I like told it I want to create a markdown editor, and I told it like some specific like features I wanted, like being able to do um, headers and bold and italics. So let's see it work. So I'm just going to keep pressing tab. It's so using React. Cool. OK, cool. Oh, I did not accept it. There we go. And all I need to do is export it after this. And if I refresh, hopefully we see something on here. So we have like a really simple but slightly ugly Markdown editor here. I'm just going to check that other things work like bullets or bold, bold, or like italics. Italics. So looks like it works, but we want to like take it a little bit step further with Copilot chat by like maybe asking it to make it prettier or something like that. So I'm going to do that. So we're, yeah, Go we ahead. might both talk as well. I might, we, 
like this is a 15 minute session and you, we just did code spaces and then you did the markdown thing that we were going to build in the next 30 seconds. So let's <laughs> let's make some improvements to this as well. We've got a few, there you go. So results are saying, can you make this markdown editor prettier? Large language model as well. So the fact that she misspelled markdown is not an issue. Oh, I did? No, no, I, reckon, <laughs> I think just leave it. Okay, cool, let's yeah. see. <laughs> let's see. And so for breaks, it's my fault. Um, cool. And mm, I don't think this changed it much, so I might be more specific. I'll paste this in, but I'll tell it I want to use the style components. Let's see. Okay. A little bit of an improvement. It has it like half and half here. Yeah. That's all Let's right. Let's see. We can also try adding some other things like a toolbar. And feel free to like shout out any ideas, y'all. Can we? Yeah, add we're not a we're not kind of married to any particular yeah. um, path for this demo. So <laughs> if there's stuff that you're like, if we're building a markdown editor, we need this. Um, I have some opinions, but can we add a toolbar, which is seems like ambitious to add an entire toolbar to the thing. But this is the thing I was saying to Roselle as well. Like I've done talks and demos and technical demos and stuff for about 15 years now. And Copilot, especially Copilot Chat, has just destroyed my idea of what you can demo in a 15-minute session. So when Roselle said, I'm going to do a markdown session from a uh, markdown editor from scratch, I'm like, you're crazy. There's no <laughs> way. And then we, you know, a minute and it's done. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a bit, <laughs> yeah. So we've got it's failed to compile. Yeah. Because. I'm just missing a NPM package. So it's suggested one, but it's not installed in my I think so I'm just going to install it. npm install. Ooh. Oh, and npm. Had an extra n in there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Wait. <laughs> it just probably might give me the commands. You yeah, think it would? You can ask, how Let's do I see. install this? Can you use? Yeah, I'll go ahead and ask that just so we can see. How do you install? But I think I'll move to style components because that might be easier. But just so we could see how this goes. Yeah, so as we can see, like at the top, it's going to say you can install it by running this. Um, but I'm going to say, can we use styled components to style the markdown editor? May and I just, huh? may need to spell that one right, maybe. <laughs> I mean, or also maybe mm. not. Like, it might it might be smart enough to be like, oh, you probably meant that. Um. No, but thanks for catching that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. All right, this should work. This looks a little little better. Let's see. So, I'll add this underneath. Mm. Oop. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to copy and paste the whole file into it. That's what I usually do. You have any suggestions, but I usually like copy and paste the file into it. So I'm going to say, "Can you add the style components npm package to this code below and add a toolbar JavaScript." Oh. Yeah, I do that to give it more context usually. Interesting. This is a, so Roselle and I obviously use the tool completely differently or, or sometimes, <laughs> sometimes differently. Like I wouldn't have thought to do that, but it's a great way of like forcing that context. Um, Copilot is generally pretty good at working out what's relevant, but that's a bit of a black box in terms of what actually gets sent up to, this, up to the server. So, if, if code is really important, adding it to the prompt is a great idea. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, awesome. I always do that. All right, this last one should work. Sorry about this, y'all. Let's see, save. And it could be missing something if there's any extra field to compile. It's still using that? Refresh. Hmm. Still using it. Line two. Oh, thank you so much. Sorry, guys. No. I'll take out all the far mentions. 
delete, delete. Okay, but now they don't have anything in them, so I'll probably just add the word bold or something. Bold, bold, italic. <laughs> yeah, Capilot's already noticed what you're doing. There you go. Which one is this one? Heading. Heading. There we go. Sorry that took so long. Yeah. And now we can see that. Let's see if we click it, if it would add italic text for us. There we go. Any other ideas in this four, the, minutes. <laughs> four minutes of left. time? We could do a lot. Emojis, Emojis? let's Emojis. go. <laughs> Tables. Tables, let's go. Ooh. Let's see. OK, let's see what we can do. All right, I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right let's see. I'm going to, just to avoid the NPM packages and installing, let me ask if it could do it in Unicode. Can you add? emojis in Unicode to my Markdown editor. Cool. Awesome. Uh, All right. Go ahead. It looks like what it's done is, sorry, looks like what it's done is maybe misinterpreted what you we're asking for, and it's changed those titles to emojis. <laughs> That's true. Oh, oh no, it no, added I extra. Was wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. it has the it oh, has the toolbar buttons for the bold. And formatted yeah. it more nice, nicely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go. Let's see if let's see how the emojis even work with this. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that took less than a minute. So how right. about you, how are the tables as well? The tables. Let's see. I'm kind of nervous for that one. <laughs> Yeah, tables is, tables in Markdown is tricky. Can you add Markdown support for tables? Or sorry, should I say support for tables in my Markdown editor? Can you add support? <laughs> yeah. In my Markdown editor. Let's see. And Ooh, that doesn't something. look right. Yeah. Let me try again. How hmm. can we add a, ta a tables to my or a tables button to my toolbar? Maybe. Okay. Uh, Let's see if it can actually render tables. Table if it just knows. Button to my toolbar. Yeah, that might be better. React oh. Quill. Okay. Hopefully this can. Oh. Oh. Okay. So we've hit a talking point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Copilot chat is still a technical preview, um, I believe. Is that right? Is that yeah. Correct? Yeah, it's still a technical preview. So it's continually being improved on the back end. And there are filters in place that can sometimes trip up when uh, you don't want them to. So uh, that was a case of it being blocked by one of the filters for I'm not sure what reason um, is, the, is the honest answer. Yeah. Does it mean we probably hit the token limit? It might have, although generally I think what they try to do is stay within a token budget. So when they send the prompt up, when they get it back, um, it's going to stay within whatever that budget is. It's more likely that there's, what's that, sorry? The count. Yeah, if it sends all the history. So it, it's, when Copilot, like the original ghost text, builds its prompt, it gives itself a budget that fits well within that token limit. So it builds, it adds more things that it thinks are relevant with different levels of priority, and it will send them up as the prompt um, to Copilot, and then that gets the response. What is likely to be happening with Copilot chat is it's doing the same thing. It's building that, that prompt and sending it up. Um, but what's, come, what's happening on the server side is there is a, there are a number of filters, like it won't, won't give you anything back if you use bad language. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff that it does. There's probably a filter that's kicked in that wasn't supposed to. So I don't think it's the token mm. limit that's doing it. It's just kind of coming back with, with that. Have you got tables while I was <laughs> while I was talking? No, I just I decided to try if it would do dark mode and light mode, but it didn't. It's just changing the <laughs> the word. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I can. 
I can see on the I can see on the timer we've got like 15 seconds left, yeah. so we might call it now. What I will say though is we are repeating this session in 4:30, uh, room 4:30 at 5:15, 5:45. So if you wanted to see it again, or you wanted to tell some of your colleagues who are here to go to that one to see this and ask for the hardest thing you can imagine, yeah. um, <laughs> please do. But yeah, thanks, Rizal, for taking oh, that thank one. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. Thanks, y'all.